Well, y'all, thank you for coming. This is a, this is really a happy, happy moment uh, for South Carolina. We're taking the lead on something that's very important. As y'all know, just in the South Carolina's booming. Uh, just in the short time I've been in office, I've been able to announce over nine, close to ten billion dollars in new capital investment and over thirty thousand new employees, and we have the lowest unemployment rate we ever had and have the most people working we've ever had. But we still have <laughs> we, we have great business leaders, we have great people, all the big companies from around the world that could go anywhere they want to go. When they, they come to South Carolina, I ask them, well, why did you, why'd you pick us? And they say, it's because of the people. Said the people of South Carolina are different. They're great people all over the country, but the people of South Carolina, when they when they give you their word, they keep it. If they when they show up to work, when they say they go work, they will. They're trained, they'll learn, they're smart, they're determined. And as Mark, the great Mark Clark, the four-star general, you remember who was later was the president of the Citadel in Charleston, said there's more patriotism per square inch in South Carolina than any other place in the world and he'd been all over the world. It's all part of the same thing about loyalty, loyalty to each other, loyalty to your employer, loyalty to your state. And we want to be sure that everyone has the opportunity to work. And right now, we are making a, yet another step forward. We know this, we have a, somewhere between 74 and 70,000 good jobs looking for people, looking for workers. In the past, it's been the other way around, where we had people looking for jobs. Now we have the jobs looking for people, and they're good jobs. And the training is available in this state for free, in most instances, for all of these jobs. Prosperity requires that businesses have access to a pipeline of future employees who are trained, educated, and ready to work. And those are the questions that they ask when businesses want to expand. Our economy is booming. As I mentioned, the unemployment rate is 2.6. Wages are up, and that's resulting, as you know, in the budget surpluses have already been announced this year. But there's a flip side to this prosperity. Businesses are struggling to fill the vacancies in their workforce. The labor market is tight. Competition for workers is fierce, and some businesses are actually closing or not expanding not because of lack of customers, but because they cannot staff the businesses. In this kind of economy that we have right now in South Carolina, there's no reason for anyone who can work not to be working, especially if that person is able-bodied and is receiving public assistance. So that's why we're here today. This workforce demands that we leave no stone unturned and make maximum effort in every category to help our state's businesses fill those jobs with skilled and educated and trained workers and help our people go to work. Without work, without meaningful work, life loses its joy and meaning and we want people to work. Last year, I asked our state and human health, human services director, Josh Baker, whom you'll hear from in a minute, to request a waiver from the federal government that would allow the state to require certain able-bodied recipients of public assistance to pursue at least 80 hours a month of community engagement, education, job training, or employment. Today, we have, jo we have joined with a very distinguished guest, the Administrator, the Centers for Medicaid and Medicaid, Medicaid and Medicaid Services, Ms. Seema Verna, the Administrator, to announce that South Carolina's request has been approved by the federal government in this Trump economy, which is wonderful. South Carolina is the first state to be approved for this type of waiver that has not expanded Medicaid under Obamacare. With this approval, I have today issued an executive order immediately initiating the implement, implementation and execution of these work requirements for these able-bodied recipients. 
My order also creates the State Community Engagement Implementation Task Force to coordinate these efforts between the numerous agencies and entities necessary to implement the new requirements and begin adding new skilled, trained, and educated workers to our task force. And this includes our Department of Corrections, the Department of Corrections, probation, pardon, and parole, and everything in between, and our workforce and development agency. Our state is directing more resources and funding toward enhancing workforce training and development than ever before in scholarships and grants. This is a state in which if you want to work, it is there for you. We have apprenticeships, we have skilled trade recruitment and partnerships available through our state's technical colleges that are unmatched anywhere in the country. All of the assets and opportunities are in place in our state now to help every South Carolina, every South Carolinian achieve financial independence and prosperity. It is time for all of South Carolina to get to work and we are taking a major step forward today. And now I'd like to ask to come forward Ms. Seema Verna, who is the Administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Well, thank you for joining us today. And I bring you greetings from President Trump. And thank you to Governor McMaster and the state of South Carolina for graciously welcoming to the, to the Palmetto State for this historic announcement. Together, the two Medicaid demonstrations that CMS is approving today will build a bridge out of poverty for thousands of South Carolinians. In the spirit of humility, the Trump administration recognizes that Washington, D.C. doesn't hold all of the answer, and that's why this administration at every turn has granted states flexibility in shaping their Medicaid programs. States are the laboratories of democracy and they understand the needs of their citizens better than anyone in Washington. Medicaid is stronger for that sort of robust federal state partnership and I want to sincerely thank Governor McMaster for committing wholeheartedly to that vision and for his leadership in advancing such innovative reforms. Gandhi once said, the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. And his sentiment impresses the gravity and importance of programs like Medicaid. It is more than a safety net, it's a lifeline that must be preserved and protected for those who truly need it. And that's exactly what these demonstrations do. They build a bridge out of poverty for thousands of low-income South Carolinians to provide opportunities for working-age adults to take advantage of the Trump economy. Under the President's leadership, unemployment is at a 50-year low, and Americans are earning more. And recent census data shows that President Trump's economic leadership has resulted in more than 1.4 million fewer people living in poverty. And thanks to President Trump's leadership and commitment to protecting Medicare, South Carolina has seen Medicare Advantage premiums decrease by 15 percent. And the President's promise around affordability has resulted in a 9 percent decrease in premiums in the individual market. But despite these historic economic gains, Obamacare continues to drive the cost of health care beyond the reach of many families. And by linking Medicaid coverage for all working age parents below poverty with community engagement participation, these demonstrations provide a pathway out of poverty for families across the state. And like many other states, Governor McMaster is looking to use every tool in his arsenal to lift his residents out of poverty. And that's why we support these innovative approaches that seek to include every family in the American dream. And it's important to note that these demonstrations include important protections and guardrails for beneficiaries, including appeal rights and exemptions for those 
who have the primary responsibility of caring for a loved one, are medically frail, or are participating in substance use disorder treatment, among others. And it also provides for good cause exceptions based on illness or disability. And a wide array of activities, not just work, comply with the requirements. And that includes education, training, community service, and self-employment. As a father of Medicaid, Lyndon B. Johnson wisely remarked, quote, the aim of public assistance programs is not only to relieve the symptoms of poverty, but to cure it and to, above all, prevent it. Anything less risks locking South Carolinians into poverty, a state of affairs that starts to make Medicaid look less like a safety net and more like a trap. President Trump is working to ensure that every American has the opportunity to fully enjoy the opportunities created by our booming economy. And his agenda is designed to support American families by lowering the cost of health care. And these efforts are only further bolstered by the locally driven solutions put forward by states like South Carolina and with the help of innovative leaders like Governor McMaster and his team. And so thank you for all that you do to improve the lives of those you serve. And it is with great pleasure that I bring these completed waivers to Governor McMaster and the state of South Carolina. Thank you. Before you step back, Administrator Seema Verna, I know that the President is very proud of the work that you are doing. But on behalf of approximately or just over 5 million proud, happy South Carolinians, we appreciate the tremendous effort that you put into getting this done for the people of South Carolina. We thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Now the South Carolina Department of Health and Human Services Director, Josh Baker. Thank you, Governor. Uh, now that the waiver has been aptly described by Administrator Verma, I think it's uh, my responsibility mostly to thank people. So thank you, Governor McMaster, for your leadership. Administrator Verma for continuing to work uh, with the state to bring this to full approval. Medicaid's core mission um, has been to bring families and individuals to self-care and self-sufficiency. It largely does that through the financing of health services for individuals, direct payments to providers, but increasingly, Medicaid agencies and states have, look, have looked to other factors, health, education, income, employment, family stability, as drivers of children's health and wellness. Governor McMaster uh, request of the agency, requested of the agency to seek a waiver to do just that, to tie income, community engagement, and education to the well-being of the children, the elderly, the disabled, and the parents of this state. It also builds on Governor McMaster's work um, to combat the opioid crisis, reduce inmate recidivism, and improve health outcomes for mothers and babies in the earliest stages of life. It would have not been possible without his leadership. It would have not been possible without Administrator Verma's commitment to state flexibility. And it would have not been possible without the team I have here today who spent hours and months negotiating, researching, and writing to produce this. So with Administrator Verma's letter in hand, with Governor McMaster's signature that gives me the full cooperation and resources of my fellow members of the cabinet to implement, I say thank you and let's get to work. And what I'd like to do, we have a number of the cabinet members here just to, to demonstrate the co coordination, cooperation, and communication that's going on. All of our cabinet, uh, our entire cabinet, and all the agencies are designed to promote work in the health and happiness of the people of the state. That's the, that's the goal of government, keep them safe so they can, can work and prosper and be happy, have long, healthy, happy lives. But some are here today that are directly involved in this. I'd ask for you just to come forward and identify yourself, please. Brian Sterling, Director of South Carolina Department of Corrections. Thank you. Sarah Goldsby, Director of the Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. Rick Toomey, uh, uh, Director of the Department of Health and Environmental Control. 
Amanda Whittle, Department of Children's Advocacy. Yes, sir. Mark Binkley, the Interim State Director of the Department of Mental Health. Anyone here from probation, pardon, and parole? Jerry Edge is not. Okay, well, that's, a, that's several of them right there. Does anyone have any questions? This is a great team. I want to thank all the legislators and other leaders community as well as volunteers who work so hard to make all of this happen. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, ours is different. We're not kicking anyone off. We're adding a new requirement for those continuing on in the future, and we've considered the law carefully, and everything that we've done in South Carolina is in full compliance with the law, and if it is tested, we're confident that it will be upheld. Well, that would you expect that from critics, but the critics are usually wrong, and they're certainly wrong in this case. We have 70,000, somewhere between 64 and 70,000 terrific jobs out there looking looking for people. And this is this is one more way to be sure that our people have an opportunity and encouraged to work. Any more questions? Thank you very much for coming to this wonderful place for this significant event and announcement. Thank you. <laughs>